you so much. Um, so many familiar faces, so lovely to see you all, so lovely to be back. Um, as you know, I say it every year, but I just love coming here. Um, once again, Sherry and Mark have found some really remarkable singers, and some of them you've heard already, I'm sure. And some you'll hear tonight, and some you'll hear next time. Um, but it never ceases to amaze me, just, you know, the standard of the singers that come here and how ready they are to sort of work in ridiculous detail sometimes. You know, we just, we ask so much of them and they're just always ready to give, which is very exciting. And so I'm always thrilled to come here. Um, I'm always tired by the end of the day, I have to say, because it's like... You know, I now teach at the England Conservatory, and, and I love it there, and I have, I think, one of my students is here tonight, actually. But that's why I teach from, you know, 17-year-olds right through to sort of 32-year-olds there, and have some, uh, you know, freshmen, obviously, and younger singers. And uh, it's not that you don't work just as hard with the young singers, it's in a different way. And sometimes you can just say, just sing through Carrie or Ben again, and it's all going to be fine. Um, that isn't the case with these people. It's like every tiny little thing. We, we work to get better, and uh, with the great people that come and work here. They have great opportunities and it's so lovely to see them rise to those opportunities and, and sort of increase all those things. So we have five people tonight. It's actually, I realised, all Italian tonight, which is fine. I'm usually doing a little German, but all these pieces are, are things that I love and, and know well and so I'm excited to work on those. Um, could we maybe have the, the piano on the short stick? It's interesting. It seems to be quite fashionable these days to have the full stick up in recitals and people often do it and it's not about how loud the sound from the piano is I think it's really about the clarity and what happens sometimes is if you have it right up you just get too much sort of focus from the piano and it's again you could have the biggest voice in the world but I'm just not sure that it's always right and so it's a very interesting thing that it never used to happen, I think, that you, for recitals people would have the full stick up, but now they do. And um, anyway, so we asked for this uh, to go down so that you hear that you know the real balance between. Uh, they're obviously the pianist is trying to make an orchestra sound, which is great, but to hear the real balance with the singers and the and the piano. So I think we have Felicia first.
that if anybody sees it on someone's list of, of uh, audition pieces, it always gets picked, right? Yeah, no. Do you always get it picked? Oh, yeah. Do you ever start with it? So you don't know. You like to warm up and then go for it. Yeah. But you can guarantee it's going to be picked because it's one of those things that people go, hmm, let's see if you can sing that. Well, I think you answered that. You most definitely can. It's a great one for you. No, it's, it's fabulous. Um, I think the aria is, is great. I think, you know, sometimes uh, you could maybe do just some different colors, but I think you've thought it through really well and, you know, you know where you're going and there are some changes of colors, which is important. Just because it repeats so much, and of course the text repeats, yeah. but also the, the lines repeat and so on. Um, I think, you know, there are places where you could maybe go just a little more sort of... Um, intense but quiet, you know, that okay. sort of behind yeah. gritted teeth kind of thing. I mean, she's crazy. Yeah. I can yeah. you can probably tell that. I mean, not Felicia. <laughs> but um, yeah, she's crazy. This character is completely crazy. Um, so, but, but I think there's something very powerful about that. Chodaste, serpenti, that it's kind of bubbling underneath yeah. rather than sort of out there all the time. Oh, okay. and, and coupled with that, just I see a lot of you kind of leaning forward, okay. leaning into it. Mm -hmm. So, your audience are here, absolutely, and there'll always be some audience here, but there's also going to be quite a few up there, and some there, and some even up there. <laughs> you know, and, and honestly, it kind of, I think it weakens a performance to sort of take it in. It's something which, you know, not just in this, which is a very sort of demonstrative piece, but also sometimes, you know, when we're having those sort of soliloquy moments and thinking of those things, people tend to take them in, and it's not for us, the performers, to have a good time. It's for you to have a good time. And I say this often, you know, it's like, you can be feeling these wonderful things, but if it doesn't communicate. Now, everything you did communicated, that's not what I'm saying. But I think you can just make it a little bigger and just not fold in on yourself a bit. And also in this kind of a piece, I think you almost want to kind of go against what the orchestra does. So that you're kind of doing these long, sort of intense... Uh, tense also, feeling the tension in the lines, kind of going through the phrases to the end of the piece, and, and let the orchestra go, you know, all yeah. those kind of tr don't go with it okay. Okay. it's all there, it's all there in the line you actually can, I mean the you don't work too hard, but it's very much a danger in this piece that you know people work too hard with it. And actually, if you just kind of stand and sing it and have an intensity and direction with it, it's very chilling, mm. you know. And with your voice, you can absolutely do that. You know, it's. Well, I mean, this is a, one of those Mozart roles which is kind of a freaky role. It's. It needs a big voice. You need to do it, but you have to be able to negotiate it, and you have to be able to do staccato C's at, at the end and all that kind of stuff. I never. I recorded this aria, but I never sang the role, although I was hired to do it in Vienna. And uh, it was a famous conductor who I got a call from my agent saying, oh, he wants to hear you sing for Brunhilde. He hears your, it was a long time ago. Here's your son to sing that record. I said, okay, fine. So I went and sang, had a session with this conductor singing Brunhilde. And he's, okay, fine. Off I left. And my agent called me and said, uh, so he's hiring you for the Brunhilde. I said, oh, that's great. He said, but he's fired you from the Electra. <laughs> and I said, well, he might have asked you to sing the Iris at the same time. <laughs> Because he'd said, well, now she sings Wagner, obviously she won't be able to sing Mozart anymore. Which is what a lot of people, you know, think about those things. It's absolutely not true. You know, and for sure if he'd asked me to sing the Aries, I'd be like, okay, bring it on. You know, it's, I think the two are absolutely go together. And so, you know, I know you sing a lot of bigger stuff too, but I mean, not there's nothing much bigger than this, frankly. But the flexibility that you have, I think, is really important to carry through to those. I would always warm up for, for Brunhilde by singing the fast section of Nomi Dear, every performance. And I would also warm up for singing Donna Anna by singing a few Hoya to Hoes. You know, <laughs> you've got to be able to do them both. So, so um, just my question is, in a few places in the recit, my question is, is the straight tone that you do your choice? It is my choice. Okay. But... Explain to me why that works for you? I use it as a color. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I think it brings out the vulnerability that she's feeling, that she hasn't really let herself feel until now, which is why this is like just bursting out of her. Right. Um, you're not a fan? I'm not, but you know, that's just me. Um, <laughs> I find, I'm, no, I'm never really a fan of straight tone, just because I, I, it holds the breath, and the colour that it brings, mostly, for me, doesn't work. Now, in some early things, I can sort of buy, but even that, I don't love it. 
I just feel in this, I, I'd rather hear the intensity of your sound and the quality, even through those places in the rest of it. Now, there might be maybe one or two that you can convince me. I love being convinced I'm wrong, honestly. It's like, convince me I'm wrong, <laughs> seriously. And it's, it's absolutely possible. Um, but I just, for me, there was maybe too many. So let's try, let's try the rest of it. those straight down but the second one you felt I felt like you wanted to a little bit yeah and I was why like, you oh, don't do that figure out a different way well, why don't you place it a little higher okay. so instead of the, the same think of more moves of that so an sure. eval is all vowels are difficult honestly there's no such thing as an easy vowel think about an eval is if you're not careful it can take you too wide okay. and so for me in that part of your voice which is the passaggio that sort of bit between the middle and the top and it's you know, a lot of singers be like, oh, that's my passaggio, that's why that's not very good. And it's just like, yeah, figure it out. They're just nose. But people do make excuses about the passaggio all the time. So I think if you think like an U, like French une or Uber, sure. neither, it will give you a different colour, but it'll also let the breath move. But it won't be as big, okay. in a sense. Okay. Um, keep your R vowels bright. Okay. Or smania. The first time it actually sounded like smania. Yeah, so it's a, it's a fine line, but you know, just, oh, it's mine, yeah. Don't be afraid with a big voice and with a dramatic piece like this to keep the vowels bright. Okay. You know, it's one of those things that you don't feel this as much in your head when they're brighter. I've had this conversation with many of you about these, particularly R vowels, and I know about that because I have the t shirt for that, trust me. I spent a long time seeing R vowels, all, and I felt wonderful, and I said to my teacher, oh, that's so great. And he's like, no, it's really horrible uh, because it's just held. And, and, and as many of you know, I've had one voice teacher since I was 17, so that continuity, it was like, he many, many times said to me, Will you ever get the ava out of your mouth? And I'd be like, it feels so good. Um, <clears throat> so don't worry that it, but actually when you get in the right place and it has this sort of brightness to it, it actually goes further. Okay. It's got more focus in it. Okay. So Osman, yeah, just keep the vowels a little bright. Just try it one time. And this time the second music, I just think like music. So it's like an eva, but it has sort of a roundness to it. Sure. Just one more time. <laughs> doing it feels like you are doing this so much the complete opposite you're so far away from what you're used to feeling and yet it's often not far enough and sometimes you know you've been here you have to go here to get back to here you know and we all know this. it's just I, I feel that your shape needs to be just a bit more you I'm still seeing shape at the back for sure but just keep it rounder just do the two misers yeah really weird. <laughs> Did it sound weird? Didn't sound weird. But a different color, right? So a different idea there. Yeah. Well, but it is, it's one of those things that it's hard. You know, you kind of, okay, you're used to feeling this kind of thing, and somebody, and we've met once before, but, you know, somebody you don't know comes in and says, do this. And, you know, why should you, frankly? Because 
you know, trusting somebody with your voice, even somebody you do, you know, I'm some of it here and there and whatever. But the point is, is that it still takes a lot to trust someone with your voice, and it should. You know, singers should not trust people with their voices. It, they should earn that trust. You know what I mean? All the people who give you things, me too, take those, some of those things and say, well, you know, I'll try that. That doesn't feel too bad, whatever. But it takes time to get to the point when you say, okay, they must be right. So in a situation like that, you're like, it feels so weird. It's so different from what I'm used to. Not bad, no, well, that, yeah, but that's good. Yeah. Go away and try it, and you might decide you don't like it, which is also fine. Yeah, absolutely. Let's keep going. Time to get to that A. Uh, okay, so so Monday, oh, just treat it like it's a bel canto phrase. Okay. You know, it does have to have that sort of feeling behind it. But otherwise, I feel I'm a bit cheated. I'm like, oh, I want more of that note. You know, and it's not so much that you make it longer. You shouldn't make it longer, but it should be more of an expansion through the phrase. Okay. And it's a big jump for it. So make sure your support's really tucked in there. And as you go to that A, just feel that expansion of your breath, that okay. it doesn't stop moving. At the moment, it's sort of like you, you go to that A instead of letting it come from what's gone before. Okay. Just try from Vedro. <laughs> things that I talked to lots of you about and I think we talked as well is that with a voice you have to be careful where you place each part of it to make the rest of it work. So as you go through the, the passaggio, the famous passaggio, the, the vowels feel that they sort of narrow. So that basically means that your column of air is just a little narrower. Then when you're getting into the very top, you have more space to kind of open it out a little bit. So here we're not that high, but we're getting up there. And I think it just needs to not get too wide at that point. You know, there's a weird thing, and I've definitely had this conversation with many, many of you before, that Mozart is just so weird for intonation. And there are so many things that, you know, I don't have perfect pitch, but I can sort of feel where I'm used to singing certain notes or whatever. There's something about Mozart that you sing a note, the first note of a piece, and it really feels like you're singing the third higher. Because the placement that you have to have is so high for most Mozart. And just like inter intervals that are very close sometimes feel like they're miles apart. And intervals that are miles apart feel like they're close. I don't know any of the composers that's like that. Even some of the bel canto composers where they have similar sorts of lines. It's not the same. And, you know, if I go back and look at the music that I studied when I was a student, I have arrows up and down on every single note, every single one. And it's still the same. If I go back and sing those now, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm flat on that one. So this one here, it's going up there, but it's not quite that open, I think. Okay. Can we just go from there, Il Germano? <laughs> Germano was perfect. I imagine. That one was there, but halfway through. Okay. Don't make us wait that long. You okay. know, get into your quality sound right from the start. Don't do it again. But the the first one was really fabulous, and that was too. It just took a moment. Yeah, sure. 
you know, there's a difference between sort of growing into it with letting your air move and sort of creeping into your shape. And that was a little bit creeping into the shape. You know what I mean? It's all technical terms, you know, creeping into the shape. Start. <laughs> talking about. <laughs> um, good. This is it's great. Let's go to the end of the aria. Just want to do the very end. Just, just be thinking about how you build towards the end. So just kind of take a foot off the gas a little bit. Thank you. Now I know, it, you know when you've done the whole thing it's much harder, but, but just feel that the last like four pages you're building towards that fantastic see and whatever so they should just keeping that tension and we feel we're like oh something really exciting is going to happen in a minute as opposed to oh my gosh this is all kind of a lot sure. which it is just from i don't know where's a good place to go from um how about going back to yeah maybe is that good oh we are there's so many chirassi serpentis yeah. that it's just like Pick one. <laughs> That's another thing with Mozart, he repeats the words a lot, which is also why in some instances we don't need to hear the words that clearly every time. <laughs> like at the end, we don't care what those words are, we want to hear the top C. And we've said these words so many times. So. <laughs> is, is yes, perfect. I've said it to everybody I think I've worked with that you know, there's a time and a place for words. The high notes is not one of them. times a day. Just feel that, not that you're kind of leaning on your back foot, but there's a sort of, your balance is kind of a little further back. Okay. Just, what I'm trying to get is that sort of feeling of tension that you have it absolutely in your body, which you do, your sport's great and so on, but I still feel that you're just a little this, and yeah. I think ultimately it not only will make it difficult for you, not today, not tomorrow, but ten years down the road, it might. So just feel that there's a bit more of a stillness to your instrument about it. And also, I think, anyway, it's one of those things that's just very exciting to see because then we are fully aware of your control of your instrument and also that building that tension, something really fabulous is coming, you know? I just feel you kind of... You're going with it because you want to. Have a good time knowing that they're having a good time. And we are. Look, we're not, we don't talk about it's not great. It's great anyway. It really is. But I honestly think it's, it's going to be even better. Uh, same place?
then you can go for a little bit more. Oh, really? I mean, I don't think necessarily quite be a muppet, but you know, it's like you can, you can. When you get to that point, then you've reached it. Okay. It's just don't get there too soon. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I love that you sing that at the end because I've heard people that just kind of turn it into <laughs> into sort of like <laughs> which is from Macbeth or something. And after all that singing is. It's many because they can't, frankly. It's because they can't sing that. So when you can sing it, sing it. It's really, really impressive and well done. Great. Thank you.